coming up on The Cut, things heat up in the race to Democratic nomination victory. We update you on who's in and who's out. Plus, the coronavirus has spread quickly around the world, the U.S. contracting more and more cases by the day. We find out where those cases have been confirmed and where the recorded deaths have been up next. And tornadoes tearing through the southern region of the states, what Tennessee didn't see coming. We update you with the latest. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of The Cut. I'm Rudy Cavazos. And I'm Molly Hudson. Thank you for joining us. Today we take a look at the top stories across the globe. Including an update on the coronavirus and what we can expect to see this Super Tuesday. This is The Cut by Cut. The Democratic presidential nomination is now down to its top five candidates. Former Vice President Joe Biden, Senator Bernie Sanders, Senator Elizabeth Warren, former Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and U.S. Representative Tulsi Gabbard still stand in the race. After a disappointing turnout in South Carolina for billionaire Tom Steyer, former Mayor Pete Buttigieg and Senator Amy Klobuchar, all three decided to suspend their campaigns not long after. When the Lord closes a door... He opens a window. I will find that window and crawl through it with you. I promise you that. I'm looking for a president who will draw out what is best in each of us. And I'm encouraging everybody who is part of my campaign to join me because we have found that leader in Vice President, soon to be President, Joe Biden. I cannot think of a better way to end my campaign than joining his, because... Ladies and gentlemen, el próximo presidente de los Estados Unidos, Joe Biden! Let's do it for Joe! Buttigieg and Klobuchar, alongside former presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke, openly backed the former vice president for nomination, while Steyer said he'd still back up any Democratic nominee going up against President Donald Trump in the upcoming election. After the three recent drops in the race, the campaign trail for the remaining candidates is only heating up. Tonight could determine who leads the Democratic nomination with Super Tuesday in full swing. According to CNN, there are four things to watch for. Former Vice President Joe Biden is looking for support from moderates in order to expand his territory and stay close to Sanders in the polls. Meanwhile, California will play a pivotal role as the state with the largest pledged delegates. According to CNN, Sanders is expected to win the state, but by how much is unclear. In addition, he hopes to receive large numbers from states like Colorado, Texas, Minnesota, and his home state of Vermont. On the other hand, Super Tuesday will be Bloomberg's first test in the polls. Warren is not showing as a clear favorite in any states, but is expected to gain delegates across the U.S. The next Democratic debate is scheduled to take place right here in Phoenix. Senator Bernie Sanders will visit Arizona before he arrives to take the debate stage next Sunday, March 15th. Tying first in Iowa, winning New Hampshire and Nevada, and coming in second in South Carolina, respectively, Senator Sanders has built his grassroots campaign on advocating for Medicare for All, backing the New Green Deal, and pushing for higher taxes on the wealthy. His visit to Arizona could be crucial for his campaign after former Vice President Joe Biden's marginal win in South Carolina, as Arizona has historically voted Republican since Bill Clinton last in 1992. Devastating news came out of the South this morning. Fatal tornadoes swept the state of Tennessee, taking more than just homes and cars. Cut reporter Madeline Williamson has the details. At least 22 confirmed fatalities have left Tennessee natives in mourning. The storm raged through middle Nashville, causing destruction that stretched for miles throughout the city. The tornado damaged dozens of buildings and homes. Windows were blown out, trees fell, and numerous power outages left 47,000 Nashville Electric customers in the dark. At least 45 buildings collapsed. Voting in Tennessee, one of the 14 Super Tuesday states, has also been affected due to the storm. Secretary of State Trey Hargett announced that some polling sites in Nashville were removed, 
while other sites across Davidson and Wilson counties opened an hour late for voters, but will still close at the same time. President Donald Trump announced that he will travel to Tennessee on Friday to tour the damage. For The Cut, I'm Madeline Williamson. We're moving aggressively to accelerate the process of developing a vaccine. President Trump announced this morning that he's working with drug companies to move towards developments of a coronavirus vaccine. The coronavirus is slowly increasing its toll on U.S. citizens as the numbers of deaths increased to six in the country just yesterday. All of the six deaths occurred in Washington state, four from one nursing home in Kirkland, a suburb of Seattle, and the other two also in King County. As of Tuesday morning, 108 cases of the virus have been reported across 15 states, with Georgia and New Hampshire having the most recent hits. The virus made way into the United States through travel-related and person-to-person -person transmission. Top official Dr. Nancy Messonier of the CDC said, What is happening now in the United States may be the beginning of what is happening abroad. In that statement, Messonier is referring to the rapid spreading of the virus in other countries, and that it is possible for the same to occur in the United States. In Arizona, a new presumptive positive case has been reported in Maricopa County. Presumptive positive meaning that the Arizona Department of Health Services reported the case positive, but the CDC has yet to confirm it. The man in his 20s had encountered an area containing the spread of virus while traveling, according to health officials. Health officials are interviewing close contacts of the patient and an ongoing investigation is happening to measure if there is any risk to the public. Meanwhile, Corona beer lovers have been hesitant to continue consuming the drink amidst the coronavirus outbreak. A new poll conducted by 5W Public Relations suggests 16% of Americans aren't sure whether or not the alcoholic beverage is actually related to the virus or not. The poll also determined 38% have avoided the drink just in case. Constellation Brands, the parent company of all Corona beer, said in a statement to CNN that the sales of the beer remain, quote, very strong, end quote. That's it for this special edition of The Cut. Thank you for joining us. For a behind the scenes look at all of our content, be sure to follow us on social media at The Cut underscore network. Thank you to CNN News Source for sharing their content with us. From all of us here at The Cut, have a great night.